to many college football fans last year, maybe not those around the Seattle area, but this was a very surprise Washington team in 2022. Uh, Michael Penix and company were very, very good. And maybe if a couple more bounce of the balls would have went their way, this could have been a player in the college football playoff conversation. They were that good. Uh, however, when you take a look at this year, this should be a year where Washington fully expects to maybe not only win a Pac-12 title, but break into the playoff conversation this year. So can the Huskies break into the four-team field, or is this going to be another victim of the cannibalized league that may be the Pac-12 conference this year? What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate, and welcome to my channel. I'm predicting all 133 FBS level college football teams this summer and that means I'm doing your favorite team so hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you know when that video gets uploaded but you can do more than that to help me support my channel you're already doing one right now by watching the video and you can do more by liking commenting subscribing really anything else you guys can think of to help me support my channel whatever you guys are able to do I would appreciate greatly the Washington Huskies Kalen DeBoer squad in 2023 is looking really nice entering this upcoming season. Hey, how do we do things around here? Well, I'll tell you, we're going to go through a roster overview, take a look at who the team lost, who's coming back, and who's coming in through the transfer portal and recruiting class, as well as taking a look at the 2023 Husky football schedule and breaking it down game by game, giving you a prediction on each one. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Washington Huskies in 2023. When you take a look at the offense, taking a look at the quarterback room, you do lose Sam Huard off this team, only had two passes last year. But one of the Heisman Trophy front runners and over 4,500 yard passer last year returns in Michael Penix through 554 passes last year, good for 4,641 yards on 65% completion percentage. Also had 31 touchdowns, eight and eight interceptions last season. He was tremendous. He was healthy. That's really all you can ask for with Michael Penix, who has struggled with injuries throughout his career but we've seen what he can do for two seasons now when he is fully healthy he's one of the best quarterbacks in the nation and absolutely is one of the front runners to win the Heisman Trophy this year and he's got a lot of talent in the pass catching room but let's look at the running back room shall we first Wayne Talapapa was your leading rusher last year with 887 yards and 11 touchdowns sadly he is gone however you return someone that maybe in my opinion could be even better uh, in Cameron Davis didn't have as many carries last year but 522 yards and did lead the team with 13 touchdowns on the year last season. You know, 13 touchdowns on the ground, I mean. As well as returning your second leading rusher in Richard Newton. And getting some transfers to help bolster up that running back room by way of Mississippi State and Dylan Johnson and Arizona State and Daniel Ngata. In the wide receiver room, uh, you are going to lose a, uh, a sort of depth piece there in Taj Davis. Did have 277 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, but he sat behind a lot of guys in this wide receiver room, most notably the three guys down there. And those three guys alone could make this one of, if not the best wide receiver room in the entire country. Romeo Odunze had 1,145 yards on 75 catches and seven touchdowns last season. Jalen McMillan had 1,098 yards on 79 catches and nine touchdowns last season. And Jalen Pope. Jalen Polk, my apologies, had 694 yards on six touchdowns and 41 catches last season. That alone could make this team really, really good in the wide receiver room. But you also get a transfer coming over from Michigan State and Jeremy Bernard as well. And the pass catching abilities don't stop there. You do return your top two tight ends from last year, your fourth leading receiver in Jack Westover, 342 yards and a touchdown last year, as well as Devin Culp, 266 yards and a touchdown as well. Is that a four-star rated transfer over from Cal Poly in uh, Josh Cuevas as well? Offensive line-wise, you are going to lose Corey Luciano, Jackson Kirkland, and Henry Bainivalu, but you do return Troy uh, Faltanu, Roger Rosengarten, and Mateo Mele as well. And I apologize for any mispronunciations I may have throughout this video. When you take a look at the offense, it is loaded. Michael Pendix, this group of pass catchers is elite. Running back-wise, I think they can be really good, and they got some great players on the offensive line as well. Now, defensively, uh, th th they are losing some pretty key pieces from last season as Jeremiah Martin was a defensive line linebacker combo. I decided to put him here, though. Did have 40 tackles and eight and a half sacks, which was second on the team last year. Uh, and then uh, Savelle Smalls gone off this team as well. However, you are returning guys like Braylon Trice, who did lead the team last year with 10 sacks on the season. Zion uh, Tupua uh, Fetui, again, I apologize for mispronunciations, but uh, he had four and a half sacks last year, and then Tuli 
you know what? I'm not even going to try to pronounce that last name, but 30 tackles on the air last season. He'll be a good option on the defensive line. Linebacker wise, you do lose Cam Bright was your third leading tackler last year with 60 tackles, had two and a half sacks, was a very good player as well as Christopher Mole. Uh, and uh, it looks like I have Jer Jeremiah Martin on there twice. So I do apologize for that fact, but again, to go over Jeremiah Martin's stat line, 40 tackles, eight and a half sacks last year. He, again, he was so important to this team. I had to put him on the list <laughs> twice, I guess, but uh, try to ignore that. I apologize for uh, whatever happened there. Probably more of a true linebacker than defensive lineman, but uh, hey, uh, li linebacker-wise, who do you return? Edifuan Ulofoshio, uh, your, leading, your second leading tackler, I should say, last year, Alfonso Tuputala, and Carson Bruner, who was your fifth leading tackler to this team, and if Ula Foshio can stay healthy. He's going to be a very good player for the Huskies this year, as well as getting a transfer from USC and Raylan. Goforth was very good for the Trojans. My apologies should be good again for the Huskies next year. In the defensive back group, you do lose a couple really good players. Jordan Perryman is gone, as well as your leading tackler and Alex Cook. Now, the secondary did have its questions last year. It does return some good talent. Asa Turner was your fourth leading tackler last year, also led the team with two picks. Also returning Dominique Campton, Michelle Powell, uh, and then also getting a transfer coming over by way of Oklahoma State and Jabbar Muhammad. So if this secondary, if this passing defense can improve, we're looking at a very, very serious contender for a college football playoff spot. Your head coach is Kalen DeBoer. Your offensive coordinator is Ryan Grubb. And your defensive coordinator is Chuck Morrell. As we take a look at the schedule for the Huskies in 2023, hey, if you don't know how this works by now, let me run you by it. Uh, if a game is to be played at home, for the Washington Huskies, it's going to be underlined. Any game on the road is going to be an italics or the slanted text. Any game in green is a game I think the Huskies will win easily. Any game in yellow is a game where, okay, hey, you know, the other team's going to put up a fight, but the Huskies will still be able to win, and red is a loss. So without further ado, here are the Washington Huskies in 2023, and they start out with Boise State. They're probably going to be one of the best teams. In fact, I do think they're going to be one of the best teams in the Mountain West Conference this year. Wouldn't surprise me if they walk away with a conference championship at the end of the season once it is all said and done. But they are not up to the level of the Washington Huskies. I think Washington will be able to shred that Bronco defense with the amount of offensive firepower they have, rushing the ball and throwing the ball. Washington should be able to get off to a nice footprint in 2023 with a win there. And then they should be able to beat Tulsa uh, pretty easily there as well. Same kind of metric marks. Uh, I'm kind of going to say that a lot in this video, but it's true. Washington's got a very dynamic offense. Uh, and if this defensive front seven can stay healthy, they can really get pressure on the opposing quarterbacks. Tulsa will not be able to keep up with any of that here against the Huskies. Then there is this game. And I was this close to picking the upset, but if you've watched any of my Big Ten videos, you'll know what I have to say about Michigan State. I think they have a lot of very good pieces de uh, defensively, and they're going to have a really good defensive line. However, when you take a look at what this team has offensively, it definitely leads to a lot, a lot of questions. Who's going to end up playing quarterback? How good will he be with Peyton Thorne leaving town? How good will the wide receiver room be with the likes of Jane Reed? And uh, to many people, maybe surprisingly, Keon Coleman being on his way out of town while the running back room is set. And you got some good pieces defensively. I don't know that the pass catching abilities with whoever plays quarterback in that wide receiver room is going to be able to step up and make enough plays to keep with the dynamic offense that Washington has to which the uh, Michigan State's defense, I think it's going to play a good game, but to Washington's offense credit, I don't know uh, that Michigan State's going to be able to keep up with the sheer amount of points the Huskies may put up in that game. So Washington, I think, will win that game there. And then you got to play Cal, and Cal, I think, has the chance to be a little bit of a sleeper in the Pac-12 this year. However, I think Cal's situation, and uh, I don't know if I've said this in my USC video, but Cal's situation, in my opinion, is that of, hey, look, that's going to be a very talented team in just a very, very competitive conference, uh, and especially against a team like Washington. I don't know if they stack up that well. I think the Huskies will be able to win that one uh, fairly easily. Then you got to go on the road and play Arizona. And you know what? Jed Fish's group, I think, is going to put up a fight with Jane Delora there at quarterback. It's going to be a very interesting quarterback battle. However, Arizona is losing some key contributors to the transfer portal. However, I think that's going to be a very, very solid team in 2023. They have the potential to pull off an upset against someone big. 
I just don't know if it's this Washington Huskies team, right? I don't know if Arizona has enough defensively to keep up with Washington offensively. And, hey, maybe Arizona's going to be able to put up some points. At times, they were able to put up points last year. And I think they can do so against Washington. So if that defense steps up and makes some plays, watch out for the Wildcats. But for right now, I got the Huskies going on the road and being what I think is going to be a very good Arizona team. And then you get your bye week in a perfect time right before the game against Oregon. Uh, I will promise you this. The folks in Seattle are going to be loud and proud. And Oregon is going to be a very, very good team. Bo Nix is returning at quarterback. He's going to be a very good player in 2023. Could be a Heisman dark horse as well. As when you take a look at the rest of the offense, they got a lot of great pieces. And defensively, they stacked up on transfers, especially on the defensive line. They kind of stacked up on transfers everywhere for Dan Lanning squad. That's going to be another one of the teams that can go win a Pac-12 title and make the college football playoff in 2023. But again, Washington, I think, is going to be too dynamic. And I think that defense is going to give Bo Nix a little bit of trouble there, make some plays. And Oregon makes it very competitive. I definitely see it being a single-digit game. But Washington, at the end of the day, I think it's going to come out on top of that game. And then after that hard-fought game, I do think you have a couple easy ones coming up next. Arizona State, I think, needs a, a little bit of time in order for Kel Kenny Dillingham to really get going. However, they've got a lot of talented transfers coming in there. And when you take a look at the Stanford Cardinal here, um, really, when you take a look and you dive on into that team, I just don't know that they're they're going to be any good. I think they... Definitely probably are going to be one of the worst Power 5 teams of this year. And Troy Taylor may just need some time to really get that program back up off the ground. And then you got to go on the road and play USC. They have the talent to compete with USC, especially offensively. They can turn that into an offensive shootout style game and really give USC fits, uh, especially give that USC defense some fits. However, I don't know if I've quite outright said it in this video, but the past defense last year for Washington was statistically one of the worst in the country. And well, we know what USC does really well with Heisman Trophy winner last year, Caleb Williams. Oh uh, yeah, they throw the ball. I think this Washington Husky secondary is going to have a little bit of a very bad day here uh, with uh, I think the Washington secondary is going to struggle quite mightily with what Caleb Williams and company are going to be able to throw at them. Lincoln Riley's one of the best offensive minds in the country. He'll figure out this Husky defense and the Trojans pick up or the Trojans hand the Huskies their first loss of the year. No, not to fret though, because the Huskies do come back at home and play Utah. And I think this Utah defense is still going to be very, very physical. You got Cam Rising coming back. He's played a lot of football in his career. The only question is, is his health, is it still up to where it needs to be? Regardless, I think Utah is going to be very good in 2023. I think that's going to be a team that you got to watch out for. They got another legit, legit shot to make a Pac-12 title game. I just think that Washington is going to be too much offensively again. Utah loses a lot of key contributors on that defense, and I think Washington takes advantage, wins that game at home. Now, on the road at Oregon State is another very, very scary game. Do not count out the Beavers this year because they got a lot of great talent on defense, maybe some underrated talent defensively, as well as when you take a look at the offense. Hey, former Clemson quarterback DJ Uyunglele comes in there, and even though he may not have been up to par from what he was in his couple outings in the COVID year, that's a much-needed upgrade at quarterback for the Oregon State Beavers. That team is going to be really good. However, I... I do not think that Oregon State has the necessary pieces on defense. While they may be some solid pieces, I don't think it's necessary enough, or I don't think it's necessarily enough, there you go, to beat the Washington Huskies. And then I think the Huskies will win the rivalry game against Washington State fairly easily. Yeah, it's a rivalry game. The Cougars can put up a challenge. But all in all, I do have the 11 and uh, I do have the 11 and one record standing by Washington this year. This is going to be a very good team, especially offensively. And if the defense can stay healthy, well, this could be a team you could see in your four-team college football playoff bracket. But that's going to do it for me on the Huskies. Hey, like, comment, subscribe, and remember to play hard, but tailgate harder. See all you guys in the next video. Goodbye.